I-10 is the fourth largest interstate in the United States at 2,460 miles long. It was started by Dwight D. Eisenhower in 1956 as part of the Great Infrastructure Program and starts at Santa Monica, California and ends in Jacksonville, Florida. It cost about $100 billion to do and by 1990 it was mostly all complete. Now the, the work in our part uh, was really at the Wallace Tunnel. That was started in 1969 and mostly built by ASCO, Alabama Dry Dock and Shipbuilding Company. And in 1974 is when they started the bridge span across the bay. And that was pretty much completed in 1978. And so this was really needed to replace old Highway 90, what a lot of people still call the old Spanish highway or old Mobile Highway. And so basically the causeway is Highway 90 and it continues 90 even on the Government Street when you go through the Bankhead Tunnel. And so when you consider you know how long it took to build uh, the wide Highway 31 from the top of the Spanish Fort Hill to 181, I think that went relatively quick. Like I said previously, the tunnel work began on this in 1969 and a lot of it was done by ADSCO. Uh, both my aunt and uncle worked there and he also hired me to work for the parent company Atlantic Marine and so it provided a lot of local jobs the construction of this you know pretty much your biggest employers at the time was ADSCO the other shipyards as well and Scott and International Paper Companies uh, so this project actually put a lot of bread and butter on a lot of people's tables you can see in these photographs a lot of the ADSCO workers out there welding on this and fabricating it. Uh, this thing pretty much went together the same way the Bankhead Tunnel did. They would build these large tube sections and sink them down into the river, pump them out, and then refabricate them when they got down there. And But the only thing that's pretty much different with these is that these openings were bigger, so uh, bigger trucks could actually get through the Wallace Tunnel where you were kind of limited with the Bankhead, and that's why we see so many trucks getting stuck in the bankhead tunnel to this day. Okay, what we're looking at in this photograph is where they're building the overpass on the causeway, which is about midway down, and which contains the on and off ramps coming to the causeway and going back up to I-10. So if you were coming I-10, you could get down on the causeway here. If you wanted to come off the causeway onto I-10, you could do it there as well. And also these off ramps often flood depending on the tides and storms. And you can see in this postcard, uh, this was done by Pier 4. This is now Felix's Restaurant. Uh, this is probably a pretty good business strategy for them to have done by creating this to let customers know how close they were uh, to this interchange. Uh, but just also know this as well. There were quite a few businesses that protested I-10 going in because it was bypassing the businesses down there on the causeway. At one time, we had quite a few gas stations down there. A uh, lot more restaurants, and, and we also had hotels all up and down the causeway, too, and they're all gone now. Okay, if you look at the bottom part of this photograph, this was taken around 1957, and it was prior to the turnout being placed down at the bottom of the hill, which uh, runs around the lower part of the bluff and connects back to 98. You can see this aerial photograph. This is actually when they were starting to work on I-10 on this side. Uh, but you also look at this sign that they put on top of the hill as well, and it has I-10 written there real boldly, and also lists some of the businesses that's on top of the hill. Uh, they wanted to let people know that they didn't have to take that bottom road. They could actually come to the top of the hill and still be able to get to I-10 from there. And it's amazing now, you know, when, when traffic gets backed up on I-10, you start seeing a lot of traffic pile up here at the top of the hill, where people are trying to get around uh, the Bayway Bridge. And, but I'm going to have a separate episode on this Highway 90 thing that's going to be pretty interesting, so be sure to watch out for that when it comes out. Okay, what we're looking at is the underpass. This is where I-10 uh, meets the Daphne exit. And I remember taking my bicycle and riding around down there when I was a kid. It was kind of fun to do. If you look up at the very top of this photograph up on the hill, Around 1978 or 9, they built a overlook, or scenic overlook, they called it. And it had some picnic tables there, and it was a real good place to look out over Mobile Bay. And so if you were 
wanted to eat your lunch there, you could. Uh, in 1985, and in specifically May 25th of 1985, uh, State Trooper Larry Collier was stopped on the Bayway Bridge. I believe he was at a traffic stop. And this 18-wheeler came and hit his car from behind. And it was a pretty fiery collision. And there was two people that were killed as a result of that. And so uh, this got renamed to the Larry D. Collier Scenic Overlook. Uh, I knew Larry. I used to run into him quite frequently at the boat ramp. You know, he lived in Lake Forest. And on a side note, at one time, uh, Lake Forest and Spanish Fort Fire Department was called the Spanish Fort Lake Forest Volunteer Fire Department. We were actually pretty close communities back then. Like I said previously, uh, the Scenic Overlook got its name from Larry Collier, who was killed in a fiery collision not too far from where that photograph was taken. Well, there's been several other notable wrecks on this Bayway system. Uh, one that sticks out in mind is the one that happened in March of 1995. And these pictures that I'm going to be putting up are going to be photographs of that. Uh, it was a 100-car pileup or more, and one person was killed. Uh, six were critically injured and 74 were taken to the hospital. Uh, this was largely due to fog that took place on that part of the bridge uh, during the early part of the morning hours. They now have a fog warning device in place now to help warn drivers about these conditions. But it doesn't necessarily take a big pileup on this thing to create a problem. All it would take is just one good wreck and it would sew up the whole thing. And it's really bad on the other side of the tunnel, the west side of the tunnel coming eastbound, there's a big turn coming into there. And so there's quite a few wrecks that happen at that location. But not only that, but people have to slow down coming into that. And so it's, even though I-10 did a, its job as far as relieving traffic congestion in both directions, uh, due to the amount of people traveling now and the population that's here, you know, we kind of outgrew that as well. And so that's why we're starting to see talk about the new toll bridge that's supposed to come in and help relieve this issue and I guess we'll have to see over time how that works out uh, but you know the tunnel was pretty much started in 1969 with the bridge part of it started in 74 and was pretty much all completed by 78 so you're looking at about four years uh, to build this entire span and I really don't consider that too long uh, considering how long it takes to build roads now. Like I said in the Causeway video I did earlier uh, when I was going to do the episode on I-10, which is this episode here, uh, to please stay tuned to this particular one because I was going to put some very cool and interesting information into this. And, but when I started doing some research on Highway 90, I realized that it really needs to be a separate video all to itself uh, because of all the interesting turns and twists that makes and so I'm going to make a separate video on that. So I hope that this I-10 video I just did has been somewhat informative as well. And we'll just have to see, guys, where we go with this, with this new bridge that's supposed to be built. Uh, hopefully they'll leave uh, I-10 and also the causeway in place. Because really, uh, those two are still needed, you know, for local traffic. And hopefully they'll leave those toll free as well. Like I say, I've been here since 1962. And we haven't had to pay, at least I haven't had to pay a toll uh, since 1974. And so, uh, you know, it's just not good to have these toll roads because they pretty much do nothing but add to the cost of living. Even if you never go to Mobile, you know, delivery services are going to have to use it. And so they're just going to simply forward that cost to me and you. Uh, well, stay tuned, guys, and uh, you, you're certainly going to want to see the one on Highway 90. Uh, there was some drama that went down over that. Uh, thanks for watching these guys, and also subscribe to uh, this YouTube channel, Southern Home Talk. Uh, I'm a home inspector, and so I have a mix of videos on this channel, uh, home preservation, and also Southern stories that are specific to our area. And also like the History of Spanish Fort Facebook page if you're interested in that. And I also have a Facebook page called Southern Home Talk as well. That's where I put individual articles. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take care.